The vision test, as it has been noted, is seeing with your heart. Who is seeing with their heart? Again, all of eternity is asking that question, where is the heart, as opposed to the artificial, the illegitimate? That which just doesn't make sense is caught in so much blindness and is generally unwilling to change a damn thing about that situation, wanting to be in blindness. A true lover of the dark, completely hating the light, hating the truth, quite actually. So when one sees with their heart, they see that they are connected to the earth and other hearts. This is also an enormous part of the vision test. And when you see that you're connected to other hearts, that also means all of the other life forms that have a heart, that have a heartbeat. So this is why the aspect of what one eats absolutely is important. Are you wanting to eat the dead flesh of an animal that had a beating heart? That's a big question. That animal, that living being, had a beating heart just as you do. Or at least just as you say that you do. So, would one want to end the life unnecessarily of that living being with a beating heart and consume its dead flesh when it's not necessary to do so whatsoever? One doesn't live in some caveman-like existence or living off the land in some tribe as if they're living in a situation like the First Nations did so many hundreds of years ago where it was often necessary to do that. Absolutely, there's a big difference and it's a last resort. And even in those cultures, they understood that, which is why the taking of such life forms was treated as so sacred. They understood what they were doing. So now, it's a nonsensical argument. Everyone's just going to the grocery store and getting what they need. Or if those who are clever say, well, they hunt, well, it's not necessary to be hunting because all these people who hunt are also just going to the grocery store for the other 95% of what they eat or what have you. The point being is it's a big part of the vision test. Absolutely it is. And is one unwilling to change that aspect and continue eating of the dead flesh from other beating hearts, or formerly beating hearts, it could be said. So when one does that, there's a big statement being made. You want to remain in the carnival as a carnivore. Absolutely, that's what the definition of that statement is all about. You do not want to leave the circus. You don't want to say goodbye to it. You want to remain crowned by the mind, which is a flesh system. That's what we are caught inside of, these death suit meat corpses. And when one consumes flesh, it's a reflection. It's a reflection as if you would be stating that you would consume the flesh of even another human being. Flesh is flesh. That's just all there is to it. There's another beating heart in there. So just because it's the flesh of a cow or a chicken or a pig or a fish or what have you, it's still flesh. It's still carnival, carnivore, death flesh eating pattern that one is so accustomed to and unwilling to let go of. That's just a fact, an unwillingness to change, to change that part of the vision because the taste of it on one's tongue is just 
far too delicious and far too tempting each time. You smell that steak that your neighbor is cooking and you go, wow, I just love that. I'm going to cook several up for myself and eat them all up right now because it's just too good eating that flesh. And one is making that statement to all of eternity. It doesn't matter if you disagree with what's being presented here or you disagree with my own view, even just my personal view that I'm presenting in regards to this. You're making a statement to eternity with your words and your actions. That has nothing to do with me. You're wanting to continue taking up the crown of the mind, which is all about eating flesh, being a carnivore, being a cannibal, even. Flesh is flesh. That's just all there is to it. doesn't matter. It's the flesh of a pig, a cow, a chicken, a fish, a deer, a moose, what have you. It's irrelevant. Flesh is flesh, and there was a beating heart, a living heart in there until that beating heart was killed it was murdered and then one wanted to consume the rotting flesh of that animal that no longer has a beating heart and of course that's the reflection of the infliction of force placed upon the earth all the time just constantly taking from it and destroying the rhythm and beat of the earth's aspect, the the heartbeat of the earth. So the earth feels all of that pain of other hearts that are suffering or going through those pains being killed. Absolutely it does. If one wants to deny that, go ahead. Make it one of your insulating factors deny the revelation it doesn't negate the truth your denial not whatsoever not in the slightest all it does is insulates you from the fact and you remain in the system of the mind wearing that crown and these become your personal declarations and especially in the time to soon come these things absolutely do matter they matter greatly and of course, would one listen to all of the clown science that says that fruits and vegetables feel pain or feel pain in the same way? It's just ridiculous. This is a bunch of clown retard science. There's no heartbeat in a carrot or a head of lettuce or a turnip or an onion or a raspberry or when you gather some wheat. There's no heartbeat to any of this. There's a clear difference between all these things, which is called a diet of a vegetarian or a vegan, whatever label one wants to put on it. None of these other sources of caloric intake involve a heartbeat or a nervous system. None of these things have the ability to move from one place to another place with four legs or a fin. It's quite clearly a lot different. So is one seeing that or is one choosing just, just to ignore it? Because, again, it's convenient, especially because of the taste involved. That's it. That's all it comes down to, really. One just simply enjoys the taste and the addictive properties of that taste. One would rather be a flesh eater, which, of course, is about eating the flesh of death. And in the system of death, well, of course, death wants you to do that. That's the whole point. It wants you to eat dead things because it is death. It wants you to eat something that came from a heart that is now not alive and consume that entirely. 
death loves when you do that. It gives you all the credibility in the world towards its system. And your statement towards the heart, towards the true creation, is also heard loud and clear. And especially when you listen to things like this, and you choose to remain blind completely. So go ahead. You can get angry at this voice, this heart for presenting it. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. You're making your own statement, your own declaration. So, again, there's no, there's no argument here. I'm just presenting something from different angles. As clearly as can possibly be stated. And that's the other important part of the message I'm going to get into, is the aspect of the angles of vision which are infinite, quite actually infinite. They are innumerable. And so the true creation is all about seeing everything, and this system is about blindness and missing everything. This is why in the Hebrew language, the word for sin means to miss. It's a sin to miss, and of course, what is being talked about is vision again. It's missing things. You're not seeing it all, or really anything, because you're in the land of the blind, and Hell's Master is very blind. Pretty much completely blind. That's the one-eyed king, though, who in the land of the blind rules over all the retards in the land of the blind. Of course, it's a retard system because in its harvesting, it wipes everyone clean, the slate is clean, and you have to start all over again. That's why, what does a, a, a child, a kid, a baby sound like when coming into this system? They're just born into it again, and it's all goo goo ga ga. I'm a retard again. I have to learn everything from scratch. There's no evolution in it whatsoever. You've quite literally been erased. Starting all over again. And of course, yeah, the, it makes it absolutely impossible what has occurred here in this opportunity. Having to figure out every last thing all over again. But you see, that's the fear of death. It's so terrified of being figured out that one of its greatest buffers and security measures is to wipe the slate clean in every individual upon death. Because it knows if it doesn't do that and one re retains all of their memories, all of their knowledge, well, its system isn't going to last very long at all. One can easily see that. Look how quickly everything can be figured out, especially with the access, accessibility to so much information. Things are easily pieced together. So if one is retaining their knowledge from lifetime to lifetime, well, this system would already have been over a long time ago. And that's the point. So it's terrified of that, and... One of its obvious measures upon death, upon the individual death, is to completely erase all of the memories, all of the, all of the knowledge that has been built up. And then when one reincarnates, yeah, you are again a retard. Quite actually, you have to start from the very beginning again. So that's just the unfortunate reality, and that's obvious. Uh, these things have already been gone into and pointed out in previous works. So the basis of vision, true vision, is to see all angles and not miss a single thing. And our true creators see it all, and it's about 
correcting the vision that's been taken down, the heart that's been brought into this system of death by taking in the wrong fruit, the wrong vision, a disease vision that is just completely blind. It doesn't see anything and it makes all kinds of mistakes, all kinds of errors. And when a thing is missed and there's one error, well, one error leads to two and two to four, four to eight and so on. And it keeps building because things keep getting missed and then more errors keep stacking up upon the former errors. And inevitably, that creates a situation of chaos and disease, quite actually. And that's what we see before us right now. It's just been a stacking of mistakes and errors over and over and over again until the accumulation is so much it creates quite actually an emergency situation. Hence the aspect of the emergency call that was made in 2001. So even Hell's Master realizes that he can no longer control the situation. Of course. So an emergency call was sent out. But even though that emergency call was made, there's still so much arrogance. He still wants to remain in control of so much. And this is about the harvest, obviously. So, even though he knows the end is coming soon, he wants to retain as many retards as possible and harvest every last individual. Or, at the very least, as many as possible. That's, uh, again, why this opportunity is so tremendous. Because it really is about getting out of hell system at this particular point in time that is to soon come. This is a harvest system. There's all kinds of reflections of that. Every, every year a farmer knows that, a rancher knows that. They're just the reflection of Hell's Master who does the same thing. And we are caught inside of this prison shit suit, which is all about taking and harvesting. No matter what diet one is consuming. That's just a fact. To keep this thing in perpetuation, to keep it going, yeah, caloric intake is necessary. Of course, yeah, many present sun gazing and things like this, or being a breathitarian, if you will. So, if one has found that these things actually work for them, good on you. Fantastic, good job. You've done it. You don't need to consume calories. But for everyone else, well, that's just not the case. So, you're left with certain choices. And choices are about the vision that one sees. And one has to either see with their heart or one is caught in the land of blindness where you remain in the labyrinth of the mind. Still caught in the system of that false crown. This is why one's choices in these regards is so important and of course a willingness to change. And would one hear the truth in the revelation and get rid of their factors of insulation and just face that truth head on and then be willing to adjust and change the vision within themselves. Truly see with your heart. See the angles being presented as well. And know within oneself that yes, I missed. I absolutely missed. And it is a sin to miss. For sure. One hasn't hit the mark. So does one just give up because... What? You missed the mark? Or one doesn't like that word sin? Oh, I don't like that. It's too religious. 
Well, whatever. Use another word, then. This is not a religious debate. I'm not a promoter of false religions and false ideologies and outside saviors. All of that has been presented over and over and over again. It's just a statement, a statement of fact of what one sees or is refusing to see. Again, is it a will to deny, a refusal to see, or is one going to see with their heart and then make the adjustments that are necessary to correct the vision? Core, rect, core meaning heart, obviously. It matters. If there's an unwillingness, then one is declaring that they're already perfect. You're declaring that you are God then, which is ultimate hubris. If you don't think that you have any adjusting to do, no changes inwardly in your vision, in any of your actions, that's what your declaration is. Absolutely. I'm just perfect the way I am. All right then, clown. Go ahead and keep thinking that. Because that's exactly what one is going to be. If one wants to act like a clown, one gets treated like a clown. That's a fact as well. It's about taking it serious and knowing that no one has the perfect vision here. No one. Willingness to change. That's free will. That's the gift that each of us has as part of the inheritance. It's really the largest part. The ability to choose what's being presented in front of us. And is one going to make the correct choice? See the angles and then choose not to miss this time. And in the time to come, in the narrow gate... Is one going to choose not to miss the opportunity? That's the big one. Bigger than can be imagined.